Right, let's get arty. Um, let's start with a new month. And I was going to do green and yellow, but I've noticed that on the Facebook group, you know, a lot of you have been sharing a lot of green and yellow, and I've been doing a lot of green and yellow. So I thought I would go uh, slightly different. And I'm going for, I think this is called saffron orange, but it's more sort of on the yellow side. Um, I've got some pear green which is that one this one is called indigo okay I like that sort of color and I've also got um, Persian blue that's very similar so you know either or there I did put in a little bit of yellow orca orchid ochre <laughs> orchid <laughs> um, just in case I wanted to tone that down and yeah i just uh, i'm gonna go for it i think these are going to be my backgrounds and this is going to be on my top and what it's about so the colors it doesn't matter you can choose what colors you want i just want to experiment with different colors that i don't normally use some are going to be pretty gory i think but i i just need to you know extend my color palette to be honest um so yeah i'm doing that um and oh yeah what it is it's going to be household objects okay to make marks right this, this is the whole month so it teaches you to look around your home and to see things and to really open your eyes and you think oh yeah that's 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 going to look nice you know making a mark on the paper or something like that and you and we're doing little projects yeah i'll do some bigger backgrounds as well but all we're doing is little projects you know it's great so but you could do a few backgrounds ready for other things you can always always tone them down always right what have i got okay i've got quite a lot of bits and pieces because as you know i've done mixed media i've done art journals so i've collected things so i'll move that out of the way that's actually lentils and you stick them onto a piece of cardboard with glue and that you can make marks with it but like this this sort of thing can make circles yeah um sometimes you can get quite a good print from something like that um and these are good with a hole in the middle as well and then you've got these or oh, nuts and bolts they're brilliant especially you know after that you can do I've, oh i don't know what that is but it looks like a little brush for like a toy of some kind but i thought that was quite interesting these is just oh i know that's the foam don't look at that one um the foam things that you put on the bottom of things to stop them sliding around and i just put them on there because you can ink them up and make patterns i have no idea what this is it comes from a scrap store but it's all tiny bits of straw stuck to some tape so that could be interesting to do with your straws yeah, and then you get all these little round circles. And loads of, loads of circles of these because you've got your tops. Okay, uh, some of the top. A bit of string. Oh, and I thought that was quite good. I don't know whether anything would work on the bottom of that, but I quite like that. Um, this, I don't know what it is, but it's like, I don't know, it's a little metal thing. Um, that's like the biscuit makers and that's one of the kids yeah oh i've got another one of those look see i've used these before so and i've got another one of these another one of these rings here i, I don't know what they're off actually no idea there's another circle there and then i thought that could be quite interesting because you've got that little you know so you'd get that and then you get a break that could be quite an interesting texture oh look. and of course your nuts and bolts this square top it's quite interesting so that's in those sort of bits they're great for making marks and so are sponges for big backgrounds i shall use a bit of that today this is uh, i don't know i found it a car boot but i just thought it was interesting it's for you know I wouldn't say wood, it's not sharp anymore, but that's a lot, a good 
um, texture there. That would be good in, in um, modelling paste. And then this, I have no idea what that is, but I've got that. Oh, oh, I am a bee, isn't it? Oh gosh, I remember the kids having something like that and you made patterns out of these little beads. I don't know, yeah, I can't remember. A bit of a bath mat. Okay, I've got a really big bit for my gel bit, my gel um, thing and this was left over so I just cut a rectangle out of that. And you've got the suction things on this side and then you've also got these lumps on this side. Can make good prints. And then of course you've got your bits of fabric there, bits of lace. Let's see, I've used it. <laughs> I've got a bit of that, but I don't know whether I've used that or not. I've tried it. I don't, don't think it worked. And then you've got your bit of corrugated cardboard, of course. You've got your bits of string to make patterns. I just put that on cardboard. Bits of string there. A bit of string. And I have two more. That's drying. We've got some lentils there okay so that'll make some good marks and then another bit of string so i thought oh i haven't got no twirls <laughs> need me twirls <laughs> yeah so right it gets a bit overwhelming when you start this so i always try and pick a couple of things okay to work with um this might use up something else. Like I say, we've got a whole month, so we'll have a play with all these things. And then I might even think of, uh, not think of, but find something else along the way. I might see something, something might come in the post. Um, so backgrounds I'm going to make with a sponge first, I think. And then these, I mean, I'm using watercolours today only because I've got a lot of them. Okay, got these Artesia ones and so i'm making them very thick but you can do all this with acrylic paint okay just that i thought no i'm going to use those today because i very rarely use them that was watercolored but thick you're not supposed to use it like that but that's what i'm doing i've prepped mine again about three coats of gesso because they're thin card that's why i'm doing it but i still like to prep all my stuff one of these has got gesso on, which is that one, okay, and that one is as is, but this is mixed media paper, okay, so this is where I'm most probably just experiment first, yeah, with some sponges and, okay, oh, got a bit of pink on there, right, so I'm going to rip that off. <laughs> And I'm going to lightly spray the water. And then, like again, I put a blob in with a squirt of water, okay, but n so that it's quite thick. All right. And again, this is just my background, so I want it a bit diluted. So I'm going to start just doing that. I'm going to rip a bit more off. Okay, I like that. And there's my sponge. I think this is a real cheap one, you know, synthetic. It's not real sponge. I think it's for washing your car. <laughs> it's not anymore. <laughs> um, a bit of green. I don't know, my walls in my house had sponge once, years ago. It was all the rage, wasn't it? Put it that way. And... Okay, 
Right, I'm going to leave that one a minute. Okay, I'm just going to... I might just spray it a little bit. Right. Okay, and now I'm going to leave it and then do the other one that hasn't got any gesso on, yeah? And that'll be nice to compare, won't it? I'm just going to do exactly the same as that. Okay, so leave that to dry, and then let's get the little ones, little babies. So if we're doing a double one, we've got to think like that. So this is not going to take very much at all. <laughs> I didn't spray water, did I? Okay. The first layer. <laughs> okay, and while they're drying, okay, we've still got quite a bit on the sponges. Yeah, so I got my little pile out. Okay, bits of paper that I, I, I will paint. Um, these, it doesn't matter if they dry. Okay, you can reactivate again with water. All right, so that's why I've got my little palettes because I once they're dry, I can store them and then I can I can use them again. So no base there, but I might use some on, you know, I might get carried away while that's drying. So, all right, so what I do now, okay, because that might have dried a bit, so just spray the sponge, okay, and start dabbing away. Let some of my pages stick together. <laughs> some don't. There's not a lot on there, actually. So I don't mind using a bit more of this because... So that's what I do. I just put a little bit in like that. And then the square. And you'll feel the consistency. This is like double cream, yeah? So maybe a bit more. But again, if it's acrylic, just water them down to the consistency of double cream. Don't want to waste that, so I'll shove that on there. <laughs> and then go over it again. This is coffee stained paper. It's a digital that is um oh yeah this is this side uh painted so put a bit on there i like the inside of that i really like that side much <laughs> same here i think so i'm gonna most probably do it that side
Okay, right. That's that. So that's how I get my papers going. There's um, a few of you that oh, we've always got papers ready that coordinate. It's because I do this sort of thing. And drive. Um, yeah, sorry, I nearly forgot this. This is um, wallpaper as well that's good for texture. I use them on my gel plate. These are good for spraying through. They're like uh, onions and things like that, fruit. Another one there, so that's slightly smaller. This is one of those things that you put your hair up in a bun. And I just took it apart and that's quite interesting for making textures. Again, I think that's a bit pair of fishnet tights. <laughs> Not mine. Of course, the good old bubble wrap, which I think I need a new bit because it's a bit flat. Punchinelli, the sequin waist. Got loads of that. And that's another bit of wallpaper with texture on. Okay. Yeah, nearly forgot those bits. This is what I've been using. It was separate because I've been using it on my gel print, on my gel plate. So. Okay, they're all nice and dry. And to me, they look like what I've all been doing recently. Same colours. I've mixed up as some of that. And I thought I've just got to throw it in. That's uh, Verdian green, but it's like a teal colour. So I'm going to use a bit of that, I think. Um, I'll use this, the green one here. I don't want too much, but I just feel as though I need something else, even though these have worked out absolutely gorgeous. Actually, let me do the other one first. Because the other one with the gesso on is not so nice. That's that one without the gesso. I like this one. Um, I like the other one. So, oh. I'm hoping it's not too dark, this. So I'm going to do that and spritz it. Yeah. Oops. Okay, just do a bit of that. <laughs> okay. Doing this again, I want some more drips. Okay, yep, like that. That's cool. Just might pick up a little bit there. So. Okay, but we've got a different colour going on, yeah? And that is better for me. So I'll do exactly the same with the other one. Okay, so I've got quite a lot of water on there now. So this is absolutely gorgeous, to be honest. So far, it's all been done, you know, with a sponge. I like this because it's really open. It's almost like um, stenciling. Now these. That should be all right.
like I said, I'm only using um, water paints because I've got a lot of them. It'd be f far more economical if you um, use acrylics for this. All right. It's just like I say, I've got loads. Right. Okay. I'll get that dry. Right, now I've added that colour. I don't want that other blue on it. Okay, which was that one. I really don't. I think that's adding the contrast that I needed. Yep, yeah, um, and I'm actually really liking that. And that's, again, all just for the sponge, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this one needs very little on, Okay. I shall cut them down to, for some tags or something. But this one here, God, I don't doubt if you can see with that background. Never mind. Um, I'm just going to go that way. Or that way. That way, I think. Okay, like that. I'm going to, <laughs> don't know, put some circles on now. I think I'm going to use this, okay. Right, so I'll, I'll start off with some small ones, and I'll just do that. I'll just I'll, I'll test on the background here, okay, and it's fine. Maybe there, like that. Okay, what's that? Um, it's slightly bigger again, really. Let's see what that was like. That's quite nice. Yep, 
yippity doo -da. <laughs> Um, Need some orange ones now. I think we need some of those. So, we need... This is a bit watered down, this one, so put a bit there in. And say, please don't use watercolours. <laughs> like I am. <laughs> Oh dear, only if you've got loads. <laughs> find a focal point <laughs> that's too big yeah yeah it's a bit too big really do you know what i'm not being funny but that is as a background that's all i would want okay so i'm leaving them alone or oh, wait a minute unless i put something in the middle in the middle of those nice something small I've got a smaller one than that I need. Yeah. Oh, that might work. Uh, green. Now I'm leaving the lane. Okay. okay, let's let's play with one of the other backgrounds then. Right. Okay, let's just go for it. Um, I'll do this. Let's... If the pot was big enough, I would put it in, but it's not. So. <laughs> so I'm painting the whole thing now.
Okay, right, I'm going to um, put some on here. I usually load it up quite a bit beforehand, all right, because you can always slightly spritz water. So I put quite a bit on, to be honest, all right. And then if you, even if it's laying around, you can still act, reactivate it because it's water soluble. This is going to be quite runny, but like I say, I don't mind. Okay, this is... Like nothing important, but I'll just make some marks, some paper. Okay. Be nice the gesso on this one. Okay, right there. So now I'll just slightly mist again. Reactivate it, just getting drips off. Okay. I mean, I love these people that can do all this, you know, random mark making. Um, I'm not random enough, if you know what I mean. I always find it um, looks too perfect. That's why I like things like this. And I like it sort of all but going wrong, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And that's why I don't mind the pages all lumped together and things like that. So these pages are building up nicely. Went a bit wrong there, didn't it? So let's put that like that. A bit more water. They just last for ages. It's... So I'm gonna on this one is I'm gonna wet down like that and this can all activate again because it's water soluble and then I'm going to do that and then let it do its thing. Okay, right, they need all drying and then we'll find a focal point for the the cards, well the decks cards. Okay, very busy, all right, very, but when they're cut down, they look okay because look how nice they look when they're small, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm going to use these two, definitely in the project. These, later on, I might um, decoupage over or not totally, you know, <laughs> just bits of it and, and change it up that way. We can do something with that. Here, um, I'm going to do a little bit of work around the circles, I think. If I find my embellishment, actually, I'm quite liking um, this. I fancy some sort of like embossing over the top. That's what I would do there. I would emboss it with a swirl design over the top. And that could be like a butterfly or something like that. That could be amazing. Um, topper. But I haven't got time for that. Because that's another technique again, isn't it? I have done a bit of that though, haven't I? Right, no. Let's do the drawing. Okay. I think we'll go with black. Um...
I think sometimes I just, when I like something, I need to stop and teach myself knowing when to stop. <laughs> And then I'll come back when I'm done and we shall find something to go on there. Right, so I drew around there, okay, and I stamped, uh, which one did I use? This one, Crate with Your Soul. And I stamped it on, oh, yeah, some of the paper that you saw me do, okay. And I picked a bit that didn't have this blue in is there right and I backed it just black card and I will be mounting those on 3d foam which I forgot to do <laughs> just <laughs> save me cutting it Okay, just got a bit of a hangover there. Not a hangover. <laughs> I don't know what they are. <laughs> I do, but not <laughs> not for um, over a year, isn't it? <laughs> um, I know we haven't been in lockdown for over a year, but it's felt like it. <laughs> okay, and then I'll use the glaze to on here you, don't, you actually don't use very much it goes a long way it makes them feel really nice too yeah i'm not putting much on so i did mean to ink round the edges and i forgot Okay, I might actually seal those as well because I, I quite like the way it's it's sort of made it a little bit like not shiny, but they just look more finished. It's sort of brought the colour out of everything, so. To 
do a dangle one next week, won't we? I haven't done one for a couple of times. <clears throat> Again, it's about technique with that one, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than... I tell you what's annoying me. is that circle's not joining. <laughs> so I need to get a pen in the same colour as that green and join that circle. <laughs> oh, no. I'm looking at it. I'm like, that's, that's annoying me. <laughs> So, yeah, I do get annoyed. <laughs> Not horrendously, but a little bit. When I see that, <laughs> things like that. Not joining up. And then a bit sticking up. <laughs> now I've got to learn to live with it. I can't. I, ha I have, will have to change that. <laughs> I've got, got some little snippets. <laughs> I have to make some out of that. <laughs> Okay, I thought, well, yeah, that was archival ink, i done that, and this is a dis Distress Micro Glaze. I always forget the micro bit now. It's a Tim Holtz one, okay, and that's the Ranger Distress Archival Ink, and I used black soot. Okay, coming in very handy, those little ones, those there. Haven't filled it up yet though. And these are great too. And, and it's really nice that, you know, with things like this that I can use them. Because I bought them ages ago to do it work in my art journal. And of course I haven't got time to work in my art journal. So this is just enough. Doing those little cards, great. And then I still get to do some backgrounds as well. So all good. That's what I say. And hopefully you're getting, you know, having a go along the way too. So I'm trying to find where my, um, I mean, look, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> We've got enough for an art journal there. <laughs> but just, it's nice to create, isn't it? Okay. I've got to find the Rolodex thing, put my stamps away and I will be back. Put it together and I put it on there. All right, and I've, I'm looking at it and I thought, do you know what? It still looks green and it still looks yellow. So next week, because it's um, this month is going, as you know, I've said it's going to be household objects using household objects in our art. Okay, so I've named it. I've just put on the back household objects. All right, so that's things lying around the house really that we're using to create backgrounds and um not so much say the focal points because i mean that you know we could do that but it's more time consuming so it's mainly about sort of doing the little techniques of the backgrounds really and then add what you want but you can use what color you want you know it's, i know i know what's happening with me is because i'm surrounded by green and yellow and orange at the moment because i'm doing that journal so, but next week I, I shall put a bit of fabric near me, something different, different colours, right? Because I am I think most of it is green <laughs> and yellow and orange. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's all the technique. You use what colours you want and I'd love to see it all on Facebook. It's been brilliant and you've all created some really good ones. So thank you very much and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye for now.